Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug fentanyl, also known by the brand name Duragesic and many others. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Fentanyl belongs to the opioid agonist drug classification. Opioid agonists bind to and activate opioid receptors, which are found in the central nervous system, or CNS. Here, you can see that we have these empty opioid receptors throughout the CNS. Fentanyl would bind to these receptors, triggering opioid effects. Opioid effects can include feelings of euphoria, analgesia or pain relief, decreased GI motility, which can lead to constipation, and more. Very importantly, opioids often result in sedation or decreased level of consciousness, and respiratory depression or slowed breathing. Part of where fentanyl acts in the nervous system is directly in the brainstem's respiratory centers, located in the medulla and the pons. This is why fentanyl can cause respiratory depression. As for some of the uses for fentanyl, it can be used in the management of breakthrough cancer pain in patients who are already receiving opioid therapy for persistent pain. For fast-acting breakthrough pain, fentanyl can be administered via sublingual tablets or spray, buccal tablets, and more. Typically for around-the-clock pain management, it can also be administered via transdermal patch. Fentanyl intravenous or intramuscular injections are indicated for short-term analgesia during induction, maintenance, and recovery from general or regional anesthesia. So basically, it can be used perioperatively, meaning pre, intra, and post-op. And remember that fentanyl should not be used in opioid-naive patients, which includes patients who are not chronically receiving opioid analgesics on a daily basis and therefore have not developed significant tolerance. Be aware that fentanyl is approximately 80 to 100 times more potent or stronger than morphine. For example, one milligram of fentanyl is equivalent to 80 to 100 milligrams of morphine. This is why fentanyl is often administered in micrograms instead of milligrams. One microgram is just one one thousandth of a milligram. For example, a transdermal patch may provide a dose of 75 micrograms per hour, which is equivalent to just 0.075 milligrams per hour. But again, don't let that small number fool you because 0.075 milligrams of fentanyl every hour is equivalent to about 7.5 milligrams of morphine every hour. This high potency of fentanyl may increase its risk of overdose, especially if used incorrectly. Like we mentioned, fentanyl can cause respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. It is one of the major side effects that we look out for. Be aware that constipation is also an important side effect of fentanyl due to its effect of decreased GI motility. It can also cause CNS depression, which may manifest as dizziness, headache, sedation or decreased level of consciousness, confusion, hallucinations, and more. Other side effects include drug dependency, urinary retention, dry mouth, nausea, and more. As we know, fentanyl causes CNS depression, which may worsen if used with other CNS depressants, such as alcohol, antidepressants, antihistamines, and more. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs for short, may also increase the effects of fentanyl, increasing the risk for CNS and respiratory depression. Discontinue MAOIs 14 days before starting fentanyl. These are just some of the potential interactions with fentanyl. Again, fentanyl is contraindicated in opioid-naive patients. Avoid use in patients with GI or bowel obstruction, patients with acute or severe respiratory distress, such as untreated asthma attacks, and patients with head injuries or increased intracranial pressure. Caution is required when using fentanyl in patients with a history of chemical dependence. Fentanyl is considered a high-risk or high-alert medication. It is important to be aware of the policies and procedures regarding high-alert medications in your area. Independent double checks are often required when preparing fentanyl to avoid errors when administering high-alert medications. Hold fentanyl and notify the provider if respiratory rate is below baseline, usually less than 12 respirations per minute due to the side effect of respiratory depression. Increase hydration and bulk forming foods to reduce the risk of constipation. As with many medications, it is important not to discontinue opioids like fentanyl abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of withdrawal symptoms and severe pain. In the event of opioid overdose, an opioid antagonist, such as naloxone, also known as Narcan, can be used to prevent further opioid binding to the opioid receptors. Naloxone often comes as a nasal spray or as an injection. 
And that's about it for the basics of fentanyl. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.